Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video of C++ for beginners. In this video I want to talk about four loops, but before we start make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon as well. Okay, so what I'm going to explain today, I want to explain to you how for loop works and I'm going to explain that on a simple example which is calculating the factorial of a number. So let me copy the text of our task here like this and I'm going to comment it out. So what is the factorial of a number? Factorial of a number is usually defined as a product of all numbers between 1 and that number that you want to cal calculate the factorial of. That means, for example, if your user enters number 6, let's say, and you want to calculate the factorial of number 6, you are going to do that in a following way. So 1 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, 4, 5, and, oh, sorry, 6, okay, and then this here is going to result in 720, so this 720 is really going to be the result of your factorial of 6, and this example here is what we want to really translate in our program, so we want our user to enter a number, and then we want to calculate the factorial of that number and write that result out to our user. And we are going to use for loop for that. So let me quickly declare a variable which is going to be called number, okay, like this. And let's prompt our user that he should enter a number. And then let's really store that number that our user enters in our number variable. Okay, so after we have acquired a number that we want to calculate our factorial of, let's explain how we are going to really do that. So I'm going to do that using for loop and what is the difference between for loop and while loop and do while loop because we have previously talked about while loop and do while loop as well. You can find those videos on my channel if you're interested and I'm going to link those videos in the description of this video if you want to watch them. So the difference is that usually when you use for loop beforehand you should know how many iterations that loop is going to make. So for how long your loop is going to run. So let me show you the syntax of our for loop. You say for and then you use these parentheses here in which we are going to put certain expressions in a moment. And after that you put these curly brackets in which we are going to write out the code that is going to be executed in each iteration of our for loop. So inside these parentheses here we need to put three things. What are those three things? The first one is going to be to set the initial value of our counter variable. That is the first one. After that the second is going to be to really put the condition that your for loop is going to check each time that it wants to run this block of code here. So before each iteration, it is going to check that condition. So that is going to be the second thing. And after that, the third thing is going to be really a way for your counter value to come to that condition, condition which means that you have to either increase or decrease your counter variable in order to reach that condition at certain point and then when that condition results as false your for loop is not going to be executed anymore. Okay so those are three things that we need to put in these parentheses here and let's now look at this example here because from here we are going to really uh, deduct which conditions, which expressions we are going to put here. So if you notice this algorithm here because this is really algorithm nothing else um, you see that this is really a counter. This behaves as counter. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and it really starts at 1, and then it goes up to that value that your user has entered. So we can use that for our expression here. The first expression is initial value of our counter. We need to declare that variable, and we are going to call that variable i. You can call it counter or whatever you want really. Uh, your compiler is not going to give you an error because of that, but the common practice is 
to use a single letter variable name for this counter that you use in your for loop. So I'm going to use name i for that. And the initial value of my i counter is going to be 1, because as you can see here, it really starts on 1. And then after that, we need to put the condition that your for loop is going to check each time that it wants to run a new iteration. And that condition, as you can see here, is really this this expression here, this algorithm runs until it comes to this 6, until it comes to the value that your user has entered. So we are going to put that here. We are going to say, please run this block of code here until my i is less or equal to number, like this, so whichever number our user enters. And then the third thing is going to be really to give our loop a way to reach this condition here at some point, which means to make this condition here false and then leave our for loop. And again, we look here and you can see that your counter is really increasing in each iteration by one. Okay, so here we are going to put i++, plus plus, which is in each iteration going to increase the value of our i counter by one. Okay. So after we have put these expressions in these parentheses of our for loop, we need to really put a block of code that is going to be executed in each iteration of our for loop. And I'm going to declare, before this for loop here, I'm going to declare another variable, which I'm going to call factorial, and I'm going to give it a type of int. Okay, like this. And I'm going to assign the initial value to my factorial, factorial variable, and that is going to be 1. And then how I'm going to use this factorial variable. In each iteration of my for loop, I want to say that my factorial is going to be equal to whatever my factorial was previously holding, multiply that by my current i value, which means by the current value of my counter, and how this is going to behave. So let's say that our user enters, for example, number 3, and then your execution comes here, and it says, please declare a, a variable, which is going to be called factorial, and it is going to have a value of 1, so we have assigned that value here, and then it comes to your for loop. The first thing that your for loop is going to do is it is going to declare this i variable here and assign it a value of 1. So we are, we are going to write that here. So we are going to say i is equal to 1. And then it really goes here and checks this condition here before it determines whether it's going to run this block of code here or not. So if this here results as true, it is going to run this block of code here. And if not, it is going to leave your for loop. So is your i less or equal to the number that your user has entered? So your i is going to be 1, and then that is less or equal to 3. So your for loop is going to execute this block of code here, which means that it is going to come here and say factorial multiplied by 1, which is going to be 1 multiplied by 1, and that is going to result as 1 and it is going to assign the result of this here to your factorial variable, which is going to stay one. After that, your for loop comes here, and at this close bracket here, it really goes here, and it increases the value of your i. And this increment operator is going to increase it by one, so your i now becomes two. And then after that, it goes back here, and checks this condition here. So it says, please check whether my 2 is less or equal to the number that your user has entered. So 2 is less or equal to 3. So it is going to run this block of code here again, and then it is going to do following. So it is going to say, please multiply my factorial value, so the previous value that my factorial was holding, which is 1, by the current value of my i, which is 1, multiplied by 2, that is going to result as 2, and that is going to be assigned to your factorial variable. So we assign 2 here, okay? And then it goes back to these 
close bracket and then it goes here increases the value of your i again so your i now is 3 and then it really checks this condition here so whether 3 is less or equal to 3 the result of that is going to be yes so it is going to do this expression here again so the current value of your factorial which is going to be 2 multiplied by the current value of your counter variable which is going to be 3 so 2 multiplied by 3 that is going to be 6 and that is going to be assigned to your factorial variable after that it goes here and then it really increases again the value of your i variable so of the counter that you are using in your for loop and that value becomes 4 now after that it is going to try to check this ex expression here so this condition here and 4 is not less or equal to 3 so your for loop is not going to execute anymore and then your really your your execution comes here and at this line of code here it has the value of 6 in your factorial variable which means that we are left only with the need to write out this to our user so we need to say um, let's say it like this number okay and then let's say factorial of that number is going to be equal to and then let's write out the result so the result we are holding in our factorial variable like this so this should really write out the result of this here so the, the factorial of this number that our user has entered and if I run my program you can see that it asks us to enter a number I'm going to say let's say for example 3 and then if I press enter it is going to give us the result of 6 which is the correct result the one that we previously got let's run it one more time just to check this number here so I'm going to say please give me a factorial of 6 and it calculates that the factorial of 6 is 720 as we did before so this is going to be really one way of writing this for loop for this current example so for calculating factorial I want to show you another way how you can do exactly the same thing so I'm going to really comment this part of code here so I'm going to say um, comment this block of code here and then there is another way to write these parentheses here so as you can see this example here is what we have used in order to write these expressions inside these parentheses but there is really one more way to calculate your factorial and that is going to be to start at this maximum value which means 6 factorial is equal to 6 multiplied by 5 by 4 3 2 1 and that is going to be equal to 720 so now you start your counter at this maximum value so this number that your user has entered and then you really decrease the value of your counter and you go until your counter value comes to 1 and that is the condition when you stop so your 1 value of a counter is going to be the last iteration through your for loop so now we are going to write out um, so actually we are going to really write our for loop using this algorithm here so we are going to say 4 and then also put this these parentheses which we are going to use for the block of code that we want to run through in each iteration and in these parentheses here I'm going to set the initial value of my counter that is going to be i is equal to and as you can see here our i starts at 6 so I'm going to put here 6 which means a number that our user has entered in this current situation it is 6 but since we want to calculate the factorial of whichever number our user decides to enter I'm going to use that variable here okay and then the condition that your for loop is going to check each time that it wants to make a new iteration and that is going to be please run this block of code here until my i is greater than or equal to 1 okay and then the last thing that we need to put here is going to be really a way 
for our for loop to stop at a certain point. And if you look at this example here, you see that your counter is decreasing by one in each iteration. So we are going to put that here. We are going to say i minus minus, which means use this decrement operator on our i variable. And then we are going to really use the same expression here. Okay. And this is going to give us the exact exactly the same result as this code here did. So if I run my program, you can see that it asks number again. So if I enter number six, for example, it is going to give us 720 as this code here did as well. So let's repeat one more time. There are three things that you need to put in these parentheses here in order to set up your for loop. And the first one of those three is going to be to set the initial value of your i variable, which means the initial value of your counter. After that, you need to put the condition, which is going to be checked each time that your for loop wants to run an iteration. And if this condition here results as true, your for loop is going to run this block of code here. But if this condition here results as false, your for loop is not going to run this block of code here, but you are really going to leave your for loop and come to the next line after it. And then the third thing that you need to put in these parentheses here is going to be really to either increase or decrease value of your counter variable so that it can reach this condition here at certain point and make it false. So we have decreased it in this example here and we have increased it in this example here. So those are three things that you need to put inside these parentheses here. And you really need to separate those three using this semicolon sign. Okay, and there is one more thing that I need to mention, and that is going to be really, you can upgrade this program here so that it checks whether this number here is greater than zero, because you cannot calculate factorial of negative numbers. So our program is not going to be behave as expected if you enter a negative number. And also the factorial of zero is going to be equal to one. So you can put that code here and determine whether your user has entered positive or negative number. And in case that your user has entered negative number, make sure to write out appropriate message to your user. So I think that is all. If you like this video and if you learned something new, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon as well. Share it on your social media because it really helps me to reach a lot more people so that all of us can learn and upgrade our knowledge in programming. And I'm going to see you in my next video. Bye.